Edward II was King of England for 20 years, from 1307 to 1327. He's the sixth of 14 Plantagenet kings who ruled England between 1154 and 1485. He's best known for being overthrown by his wife and her lover, Roger Mortimer. It's most likely this happened because of his close, possibly gay relations with a courtier called Piers Gaveston and later a nobleman called Hugh Dispenser. He's also known for his disastrous rule, which saw English forces thrashed by the Scots at the Battle of Bannockburn. He's here in our timeline, ruling around 700 years ago. Edward was born in 1284, 12 years into his father Edward I's reign as king. His father had already crushed the Welsh at that point and had also committed himself to gaining control over Scotland. To achieve this, he tried and failed to marry the six-year-old Prince Edward to seven-year-old Margaret, the daughter of the King of Norway, who was, believe it or not, the sole heir to the Scottish throne at that point. Though the plan fell apart when Margaret died on her way to Scotland, the king placed his own man, John Balliol, on the Scottish throne anyway. The Scots didn't like that, naturally, so they revolted, and their leader, William Wallace, was captured and executed by the English. But the revolt continued under Robert the Bruce, and in 1307, King Edward was forced to march north to suppress the revolt. On his way there, he died. Suddenly, the 23-year-old prince was King Edward II. Prior to his death, his father had committed Edward to marrying the daughter of the King of France in a bid to create closer ties between the two kingdoms. Isabella was the 12-year-old daughter of King Philip IV, and in 1308, she was betrothed to King Edward and travelled to England with him to attend his coronation. Even by medieval standards, 12 was still considered very young. Nevertheless, the couple's first child, the future Edward III, was born in 1312 when she was about 17 and the king was 28 years old. Edward II may well have had relationships with females, his wife and possibly mistresses, but it's also strongly rumoured that he had a close relationship with a male member of the royal household, one Piers Gaveston. Piers was very firmly the king's favourite. Not only was he given one of the best seats in the house at the king's coronation, Edward II even gave Piers some of the jewellery his wife had received as a wedding gift. The nobles, intent on finding new ways to increase their own power weren't happy with this at all and saw a chance to extend their control. Soon after the coronation, they presented the new king with an ultimatum, banish peers or face civil war. And the English barons didn't have to look far for support. The queen's father was the king of France, remember, and like any doting father, he wasn't happy with the way his new son-in-law was conducting himself with peers around his daughter. Peers was duly sent to Ireland, but it wasn't long before the king plotted and brought him back. If you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button. Each uptick helps us make new episodes. Please also subscribe if you haven't done so already. Things came to a head in 1310. Under the threat of violence, the barons made the king sign a document placing severe limits on his powers. The king was no longer allowed to buy gifts for his friend without parliament's approval. He wasn't even allowed to leave the kingdom without permission, and he certainly couldn't declare war without the baron's approval. It was a complete humiliation. On top of that, Piers was to be banished from the kingdom, this time for good. In 1313, an order was issued for Piers to be arrested. The king, abandoning his pregnant wife, joined his companion and fled north to a evade capture. It didn't work. The king and Piers were soon discovered. Piers was led away by the Earl of Warwick and executed. Edward II was absolutely devastated, but through his grief he was also acutely aware he was now seen as a weak king. To rectify this, he needed to boost his reputation. What better way than following his father's lead and attacking the Scots? Robert the Bruce had been leading a guerrilla campaign against the English at their castles on the border for years by then. It was time to put the English boot on his neck. In 1314, Edward II marched north with his army and came face to face with Scottish forces at Bannockburn. The easy victory the king was expecting did not come to fruition. Instead, the Scots routed the English completely. The king fled the battlefield on horseback and set sail for England. Meanwhile, even more trouble was brewing. Over the years, Edward II had increasingly come to rely on an English noble, Hugh Dispenser, and, as with peers, showered him with gifts and attention. Once more, the English barons were furious. Crucially, the once more humiliated Queen Isabella ran off headlong into the arms of one of the king's banished enemies, the English baron Roger Mortimer, who was now based on the European mainland. In 1326, the couple plotted together, raised an army, invaded England, and seized the crown on behalf of her son, who was crowned Edward III in February 1327. Edward II, meanwhile, was imprisoned in Berkeley Castle. Five months later, he was dead. By some accounts, he died broken-hearted. In other accounts, the king met a gruesome death at the end of a red-hot poker. We'll never know for sure. Edward II's chaotic reign was over, and he was buried at Gloucester Cathedral. In our next video, we will of course cover the reign of his son and successor, the seventh Plantagenet king, Edward III.